Okay, in this video, what we're going to do is take a look at the fracture object. Now, the fracture object is a MoGraph object that works on existing geometry. And so I have three of the exact same um, pieces of geometry, or at least visually they look the same. However, each one is made up slightly differently, just to show you all the different ways you can use the fracture. So the first one is four separate extrudes. The second one is four separate polygon objects. And then the last one is a single polygon object. And what we'll see is all three of these different options work with the fracture. So the fracture object can be found inside of our MoGraph objects right here. And I'm gonna need a total of three of these. So I can go ahead and create those and I'll take turns putting my objects inside of their respective fractures. And go ahead and delete them. Probably two. And this one is for extrudes, or it would be if I could spell. All right. So that's the first step here is to create your fracture object to put your pieces of geometry, whether they're extrudes, whether they're polygon objects or a single polygon object inside. And um, I want to point out that this gives us a lot of different options because this could be text or elements we've created from splines that we've brought over from Illustrator. This could be geometry we made in Cinema 4D uh, that we couldn't make with, uh, say, a cloner, although we could have made this particular setup with a cloner. Or this last one could just be, you know, a downloaded model or some other asset that was given to us and we want to try to use um, MoGraph on it. So that's what these three different um, setups represent here. And what I will do is create a plane effector. Make sure I have um, that. And then with my fracture objects selected, go ahead and switch to the effectors tab and drag in our plane effector. And I can see that got applied to all three because they all kind of jumped up a little bit. You can see that right here. Uh, so that's a good start but we really can't tell what is happening here or if it's working on the individual pieces until we add in a field. And to keep things simple, I will add a linear field as I typically always do. And now we can see right away that this is working on the individual pieces. I'm gonna to switch to the parameter tab here and uncheck position. And let's try rotation and scale for this one. So um, we'll do heading rotation, say 90 degrees. I do want uniform scale. I'm going to set that to negative one. And actually switch the direction of this um, as well from positive X to negative X. So that as I pull these through, they rotate and disappear. And that is exactly kind of what we're seeing here, at least for the first two. We're seeing that the fracture object separates these into individual pieces. Okay. However, for this last one, it isn't. It's treating this as a single object. And that is where, in the fracture object, in the object tab, some of the different modes start com coming into play here. So the first is explode segments. And when I did that, notice how my Fong shading changed on this. Now you can go into your Fong tag and fix it. I won't focus on that here, um, though it is pretty straightforward. Um, but now, oops, when I do this, it's treating them as individual pieces. Now, if we look really close, we may actually see it start to split them up. Um, so that can happen. Let's see if we can kind of force the case there. No, not really being able to do that. So you might see, especially depending on how you create an object, where um, you know kind of the front bevel or a front cap uh, gets separated from the rest of this. And if that ends up happening, that is where the explode segments and connect option comes in. As it will then, after it splits everything up, try and weld things back together. Okay. 
So for our purposes today, that is not making a difference whether we do explode segments or explode segments and connect. Um, a lot of that has to do with uh, how Cinema 4D kind of changed how their objects work. A lot of them are, the pieces are connected now, whether it's a cylinder or an extrude, the um, caps and bevels now all end up uh, being a single piece, which makes our lives a lot easier. So that is a look at the fracture. Why don't we go ahead and fix our shading issue with our fong angle here as well. So typically it's just reducing this fong angle now to um, something a little bit lower. Now you wanna be careful, okay? Cause you don't wanna turn it too low, in which case you'll get no smoothing whatsoever. So 40 is typically a good value to start with. 60 was just a bit too high here. And what was giving us kind of some of that strange smoothing on the sides there. So 40 looking pretty good. And if you wanna check it, we can just kind of toggle this on and off to see just how much of a difference it's making. It's still making a little bit of a difference. So we may want to adjust it just a bit further. That's still much better and much closer. So that is a quick look at the fracture object and the three different ways we can use it, whether it's on extrudes with splines in them, whether it's with uh, multiple polygon objects or even a single polygon object. So that will do it for this video. Let me know if there's anything else you wanna see and take care.